Hey everyone, we're making a series of videos available to you to learn Amazon EC2 with 10 labs and 20 facts and refreshers for your exam. The full course is available on YouTube. It's also available on Udemy. You can check the links in the description below to view the Udemy link. This course is produced by Cloud Yeti. We make simplified cloud computing, AWS, and DevOps videos. You can contact us by emailing us, checking out our GitHub, visiting our website, or following us on LinkedIn. I'll be the presenter for this course. My name is Saurav Sharma. I am seven times AWS certified. You can support us by helping us reach 5,000 subscribers. We're currently around 3,300 and reaching 5,000 is very important to us. So if you want to support us, start by subscribing to us. And you can also watch our other content, uh, buy our courses on Udemy, etc. We're adding a lot more content, so we're open to feedback, suggestions, and requests from you guys because we're making these videos for you guys. All right, now let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, I'll start covering the 20 must know things about Amazon EC2. So let's get started with fact number one. EC2 service lets you create virtual machines on AWS. Each machine is called an EC2 instance. EC2 comes from the name Elastic Compute cloud or ECC EC2 instances are elastic just like in the name meaning they can instantly grow or shrink to match the requirements of a specific application so they can grow and shrink in capacity you can start with five EC2 instances and provision hundreds and thousands as needed uh, and it ties up to the concept of pay as you go right you can pay for your EC2 instances as you go and you don't have to buy capacity up front. You can absolutely pay as you go for EC2 instances per second. So if you use EC2 instances for five minutes, you pay for five minutes. If you use EC2 instances for five hours, you can pay for five hours only. So you know you get the capacity whenever you want and you only pay for what you use with EC2. Some of the features of Amazon EC2, it has an option for persistent storage volumes by using elastic block storage. You can attach multiple elastic block storage to your EC2 instances. You can place your EC2 instances in multiple availability zones. Those are, you know, miles apart from each other uh, and place EC2 instances in different regions, right? These are Amazon's global infrastructure, right? You can place your EC2 instances in Sydney, in the US, you know, in Brazil, and so on and so on. So you have this option to place your EC2 in multiple physical locations. You also have this feature of security groups, which are firewalls that control traffic to your instances. You can have static IPv4 addresses called elastic IP addresses. You can also add metadata known as tags to your EC2 instances. And you can select the size of your EC2 instances, right? You can provision a small EC2 instances with one gigs of RAM, one CPU, and you can also provision an EC2 instances with four terabytes of RAM. Fact number two, in order to create an EC2 instance, we have to have an AMI. AMI stands for Amazon Machine Image. AMI is basically an OS image and it provides the information required to launch an instance. Now let me go to the AWS Management Console and in here under Services I'll find EC2 and then I'll click on Launch Instance to start launching an instance so that I can demo the process to you. Step number one I'm asked to choose an Amazon machine image or an AMI. 
and AMI is a template that contains the software configuration, operating system, application server, and applications required to launch your instance. So we talked about this. You can select an AMI provided by AWS, the community, marketplace, or even your own AMI. So the first thing that I do before I can launch an instance is I choose an AMI. And we talked about the types of AMI, right? AWS provided AMIs, you know, AWS marketplace AMIs, your own AMIs. So we have listed all this uh, in here. And you can browse through those different types of AMIs by clicking on the left navigation pane here. Quick start is the AWS provided AMIs. My AMIs are your AMIs that you would create. AWS Marketplace AMIs can be accessed by clicking here and Community AMIs can be accessed also right here. Let's go back to the quick start. So there is an Amazon Linux AMI which is supported and maintained by AWS. The Amazon Linux AMI comes with a lot of AWS developer tools like the AWS command line interface, the Bodo 3 library, etc. It also comes with access to packages such as MySQL, Python, Tomcat, etc. So this is something that we'll be using over and over in the labs. And Amazon Linux AMI is right here. And this is different than Amazon Linux 2 AMI. Keep this in mind, right? We'll be using a lot of this AMI in our labs. Fact number three you choose the size of EC2 by selecting a type. There are different types of EC2 instances. So let's go to the EC2 launch process. After you chose the Amazon Linux AMI, after we choose an AMI to use to launch our instance, when I select this, the next step or the next page I'm taking to is choose an instance type. Now, depending on what type of instance you choose, you get a configuration of memory, the number of CPUs, the network performance, etc. Right. So, if I needed a server that had eight gigabytes of RAM, you know, I would choose something like a T2 large, or you know, even T2 extra large. But if I only needed the bare bones, you know, just a small server, uh, you know that does a simple thing, then I probably go with T2 Nano, which gives me half gigabytes of RAM, one CPU, you know, and I'm okay with that configuration, right? So if you want something very powerful, you can go with the X1E.32 XLR, which comes with 3,900 gigabytes of RAM. That's almost four terabytes of RAM, and also 128 virtual CPUs. So, you know, there's a lot of options for you to choose from. You can select whichever fits your needs. In our case, you know, we're good with T2 Micro, and this is also under free tier. So we'll be sticking with this um, most of the times in our labs. So the next fact is there are a certain things, components, other than the AMI and the instance type that you need to successfully launch an EC2 instance and also log into it, right? So for you to be able to launch an EC2 instance and log into it, you need to make sure you know there are certain things selected properly. One of them is a VPC and subnet. Going back to the EC2 launch process, once you select the instance type, T2 micro and say next, you get to select all these things, right? And these are some of the things that I'm talking about right now. So you need to select a network a network is your VPC. Your account comes with a default VPC, so you don't actually need to create a network. It also comes with a default subnet. So if you don't specify anything, you know, you go with the default VPC and the default subnet. Now this is page number three. You know, you can go back and forth between pages by clicking here. If you go to page number four, you also need to add a storage, right? You also need to select a storage the AMI template comes with a root volume. So most of the times you may just proceed without changing anything, but it is actually included in the launch process, as you can see here. Now, the other thing that is required is the security groups. Security groups are firewalls, set of firewall rules that control traffic for your EC2 instance. And finally, 
in the last page when you review everything and you click on launch you also have to select a key pair right a key pair consists of a public key and private key uh, you download the private key and AWS keeps the public key when you launch an instance you say which key you want to use to log into that instance and depending on that uh, you know you can log into that instance so if I launch my instance with the first instance key pair right then I can use my first instance private key to log into the EC2 instance so these are the components that you need to launch an instance and log into it successfully fact number six that you must know about EC2 the EC2 lifecycle you have to know what stages a EC2 instance can be in so if I go back to my instance I'll cancel this out and really quick do a review we chose an AMI we chose the instance type we configured the instance we went with the default options in this page so next add storage we didn't change anything here but we went with the default option of 8 gigabytes of uh, EBS volume we didn't add any tags so this is optional but I'm going to add a tag a name tag of demo EC2 and then I will need to add a security group I either need to create a new one or select an existing one I'm going to create a new security group and just say a review and launch launch I'm going to select one my I'm going to select my key pair and launch right so this is just a sample launch process right I just launched it but if I quickly click on this instance ID then you'll see the instance state is pending pending going back to the slides when you launch an EC2 instance with an AMI it goes to a pending state after a while it will go into a running state it did go into a running state after it goes into a running state you can reboot your instance you can stop your instance or you can terminate your instance you can also now hibernate your EC2 instance but these are the uh, EC2 instance lifecycle states that you have to know you can read the differences between what happens when you reboot stop hibernate and terminate your EC2 instance by going to this link fact number five there are two kinds of EC2 storage instance store and EBS storage your EC2 instances are virtual machines living in a physical box right so instance store volumes are storage that are attached in the physical machine where your EC2 instance lives so you have limited amount of quantity available you have limited size available and these are the older types of volumes on the other hand EBS volumes are networked volume that live away from your physical machine and you can add multiple EBS volumes to your EC2 instance so you have two options to choose from when it comes to storage most of the times we will be using EBS volumes but we do have a lab on instance store EC2 instance we'll look at fact number seven in the next video thank you for watching